Russia sends additional antique T-54 tanks to Ukraine. Russia is deploying additional T-54 tanks, a design that dates back to the end of World War II to the front lines in Ukraine. Recent social reports indicate that a train load of T-54 tanks was spotted at Yuzunovo railway station, approximately 150 kilometers south of Moscow, according to defense blog Media Outlet. The resurgence of these vintage tanks, which began production in 1945, underscores the ongoing strains and demands of the prolonged war. It is noted that the T-54 tank, one of the most produced tanks in history, is seeing renewed action. First prototyped at Nizhny Tagil in late 1945, the T-54 became the backbone of the Soviet and Warsaw Pact armored units from the late 1950s. These tanks, despite their age, are being used in a variety of roles on the battlefield, said a defense analyst. Initially, they were repurposed for artillery roles firing from concealed positions. Now they're increasingly engaged in direct combat roles, defense blog says. The T-54 and its successor, the T-55, have participated in numerous global conflicts since their introduction, with over 83,500 units produced by the Soviet Union and an additional 21,000 by Poland and Czechoslovakia, the T-54-55 is arguably the most battle-tested tank ever made. Its service record includes conflicts in the Middle East, Africa, Asia and now once again Europe. Russia's use of these older tanks underscores the intensity and duration of the war in Ukraine. Ironically, Russia's tank strategy appears to shift towards updating or deploying models more suited to a museum than a modern battlefield, such as the T-54, T-55, T-62, BTR-50 and BTR-90. Faced with significant challenges in replacing the vast numbers of lost T-72, T-80 and T-90 tanks on the Ukrainian front, Russia seems compelled to scour old depots, even graveyards, to refurbish increasingly dated tanks. These are then normally relegated to secondary roles like fire support or makeshift fortifications echoing tactics from the Second World War. Throughout the Cold War, Soviet tanks, including the T-55-52, never directly engaged NATO forces in Europe. However, their presence influenced Western military development, leading the United Kingdom to develop a new tank gun, the Royal Ordnance, L-7 and the United States to develop the M-60 tank. The T-54 tank, a charming relic from the early era of the Cold War, still possesses some combat capabilities that can be utilized on the battlefield. The tank is armed with the vulnerable 100mm D-10T rifled gun, which is capable of firing armor-piercing, high-explosive and high-explosive anti-tank rounds. Although this gun is not as powerful as modern tank cannons, it can still pose a threat to lighter armored vehicles and infantry. The T-54 features a cast steel armor hull and turret which provides some protection against small arms fire and artillery fragments. However, faced with the use of modern anti-tank guided missiles and contemporary tank rounds, it stands about as sturdy as a tin can at a shooting range. In an attempt to stay relevant, some T-54 tanks have been upgraded with reactive armor to improve their protection against shaped charge warheads. Ukrainian drones put pressure on Russian air defense. Russians cannot protect critical facilities. Russian governors have publicly acknowledged that regions cannot rely on Russian air defense but must counteract Ukrainian drones themselves. Ukrainian drone attacks deep inside Russia continue to put pressure on Russia's air defenses and force Russian military commanders to prioritize the allocation of limited air defense assets to cover what they consider to be important targets, the Institute for the Study of War ISW reports. Satellite images from May the 6th show at least seven Pantsir-1 medium-range air defense missile systems protecting Russian leader Vladimir Putin's residence in Valdai. Ruslan Pukov, head of the Moscow-based Center for Analysis of Strategies and Technologies and a member of the Civilian Advisory Council to the Russian Defense Ministry, 
said on July the 16th that such focal air defense coverage does not make sense on a large scale since it allows Ukrainian drones to bypass Russian air defense coverage and strike from unprotected directions. Analysts note that the Russians clearly lack the air defense systems to protect all critical facilities in the west of the country. Pukov called on the Russian military to implement an innovative, centralized approach to protecting facilities in Russia from Ukrainian drones and warned that Ukrainian drones will likely penetrate deep into Russia. Amid problems with air defense, the occupiers began to form mobile fire groups which Ukraine successfully deployed to protect against strikes from Russian Shahed 136-131 drones. However, the Russian Federation has not yet deployed these groups on the scale necessary to sufficiently protect critical facilities in the West. The constant pressure on Russia's air defense system has led to some regional authorities explicitly stating that Russian companies and local authorities cannot rely on Russia's federal level air defense and must provide their own counter-drone capabilities, the ISW writes. Pukov suggested that the Russian military deploy a fleet of light aircraft to intercept Ukrainian drones, an effort that would be complicated by Russia's low production of light aircraft.